Hi hobby friends, let's talk about tanks. Rumbling over the horizon, guns blazing and shovely things shoveling, it's hard to beat the glorious bluntness of an armoured vehicle in the 41st millennium. However, those comparably plain surfaces and simple silhouettes can leave tanks feeling a little bit like toy cars if you're not careful. So let's look at a few fast tricks to get tanks feeling nice and threatening. I have three Lehman Russ and a Chimera, all fully magnetised and ready to go. I'm basing the main hulls in a brown primer, but with just a little adaptation these methods should work with more or less any colour scheme. With the priming done, the hulls get an all-over layer of olive green from Vallejo. You'll want to leave this to cure really solidly before the next stage because we're moving on to masking now and you want to avoid ripping paint if you can. If you're masking a basic camo pattern like I am here, just find the thickest modelling masking tape you can, run a strip of it along your hobby mat and, using your hobby knife, cut some random wavy patterns. Peel up the tape and transfer it onto the tank. Concentrating on getting those diagonal angles across the hull, make sure you gently push the tape into the nooks and crannies. The best thing to do here is not to sweat it too much. Make sure you have good tape coverage and a fairly random looking pattern and you should be all good. Over that I layer some khaki, also from Vallejo, and by the time I've coated all three tanks I can go back and carefully peel up my tape. Next up, one of the darkest and most malignant practices in the hobby, sprue painting. For almost everything I'd say sprue painting and sub-assemblies in general are a bad idea, but in this case, when I'm working in bulk and the paint job on the particular part is so simple, it is maybe a permissible sin. So all over black on those, followed by a quick and easy silver dry brushing with a dark silver paint. While you're here, you should also get all those millions of weapons done. Most of them should be alright with the same blast of black and simple silver dry brush. By focusing your dry brushing on the upper surfaces and trying to keep the brush strokes coming down from above, you can also bring out the shading and volumes a bit here too. The tracks are on and our tanks are battle ready. They're looking, well, fine, but kind of like toy cars, like I said. So, let's fix that. First step, some rust work. You can certainly use chipping mediums over reddish brown underpainting, but spending some time with a sponge and varying shades of brown and orange works well too. Plus, you can almost certainly do that with what you have on hand right now. Try and think about where water might pool or the tank might get scratched and starting with your darker brown, sponge, dab and stipple on layers of colour in rough patterns. There's no real manual skill involved here, just be a little bit random and you should get something that looks great on the tabletop. You can finish up with a little silver here and there to sell the effect of exposed metal and while you have that silver out, why not add some fresher scratches and run that brush along some of the sharp corners. This is where the paint would naturally rub off exposing the metal and will really go a long way to adding definition and selling the scale of the tank. Now is also a good time to hit some details like the aquilas and exhausts with a coat of paint. Now, let's really get a sense of scale on these things. Like all minis, the trick that is going to up your game the most in terms of making the object feel like a big, real thing is cranking up that contrast in lighting to 11. To that end, I loaded up my airbrush with appropriate inks and started layering in shading from below. We're aiming for two things. One, an overall gradation from the lower part of the side panels to the upper part, and two, to try and catch the undersides of the detailing. I went for a bit of complexity here and used three different transparent inks, raw sienna, raw umber and burnt umber, but obviously adjust your colours and processes to the scheme and schedule that you're working on. If you want any ideas on specific colours for your scheme, let me know down below. We're getting really close now, next step is to get some grime on this thing. If you've been around this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I'm going to automatically reach for the oil paints here. Nothing beats oil for fast grime and grim darkness. 
Mix up a fairly thin consistency of burnt umber paint with thinner and slather that all over your tanks. After a little while, the exact timing will depend on your mix and the temperature of where you are, but let's say 10 to 15 minutes is a ballpark figure, you can grab a dry makeup sponge and start cleaning off the oil wash, leaving it in the recesses where grime would naturally build up, and also any streaks and pools and bits that you want to look especially dirty. When that is touch dry, you can grab some of that same burnt umber, neat this time, and add little dabs here and there. You're looking for things like bolts, corners, openings, vents, any candidate for a particularly rusty part. With the dabs of paint in place, grab a second brush that's very slightly dampened with thinner. Flicking that brush downwards very, very gently, tease the paint out into lines, and you should be left with great looking streaks of old rust. I also took this opportunity to reinforce some of the panel lining with a slightly more thinned down consistency of paint. Check my video on the Eldar fire prisms for a deep dive on that one. And that's it. Good looking tanks in no time at all. As always, let me know if you have any questions, come join us over on Discord at the link below. And of course, a massive thank you to the patrons that support me over on Patreon and allow me to spend time making these little videos for you. Thanks and I'll see you next time.